<laughs> the Atom Project. After accidentally crash landing in 2022, time traveling fighter pilot Adam Reed, played by Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> teams up with his 12 year old self for a mission to save the future. Which, yeah. So, anyway, I had some stuff to say about that, but I'll hold back. Okay. But I watched this when it first came out on, on Netflix, and I thought about suggesting it to you, but I didn't feel blown away by it when I watched it before. So. Right. What do you think? <laughs> I'm gonna... <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I could watch Ryan Reynolds read a phone book, right? And and to me, that is absolutely the only thing about this film. That's kind of what he was had... doing in this movie. <laughs> Pretty close, right? <laughs> uh, and the thing is, is, it's like when the cameras weren't on him, I didn't care. I thought the kid was terrible. I thought the girl was boring i thought the, the yeah the, the kid whole, was trying to be ryan reynolds but it wasn't really working it, it was, wasn't working and there wasn't a connection and i thought that you, you know the the idea of the dad now who played his dad what they should have done is they should have had ryan reynolds go literally go back in time right and have his younger right. self play his younger self right i'm just saying mark ruffalo he's never impressed me even when he played the hulk it was not really I think he should be a producer. I mean, just kind of like stay away from the camera. <laughs> stay away from the camera. I don't know. I never really liked him. I, uh, he has a certain charm. Let me let me backpedal a little bit. He has a certain charm, but the way he reads lines. Well, as far as Mark Ruffalo goes, uh, the shorter, I I like seeing him for a couple minutes in a film, and then I don't care anymore. Right. Yeah. And. In He's kind of like a John Favreau in that way, like uh, right where Favreau would direct something or produce something, and he'll well, show up in Favreau it for a few minutes. Awful. The yeah. thing is, is Fa Favreau's when when you see a film like especially the you know something in the Star Wars world or something like that, and he comes in, and he does a cameo. It is like an enormous fart on the screen. It's like you can literally smell him coming. Right. I think John Favreau is amazing. Call me John. Uh, but anyway. Uh... <laughs> I, but you know, at the same time, I really enjoy his cooking show, Chef. Oh, actually, did you see that that movie, the one where he's on the food truck? Oh, yeah, I, I've seen the that whole thing. That was actually a good it. one. I absolutely love it. To, to me, the movie, but not only the movie. Have you seen the series? I haven't seen the series, but check the series out. the The Chef is the series is is amazing. Um, well, you can tell he loves cooking. I mean, that's. Right. Part of it is the people that come on with him. Yeah. And and that I'm I'm always trying to be a better cook, right? Well, I'm the same but, way. Yeah. So <laughs> for that and, reason, and, I like it. And let me tell you one thing. I'd rather talk about that than this film because this <laughs> film was so freaking boring. I didn't have a lot of notes on this. Uh it's I didn't very I, my big first note was seems very predictable. I was bored. <laughs> That's the first thing I wrote. I, I gotta tell you this. This is the problem that I had. I saw this film two days ago, right? And right now I'm sitting here. I can't remember a thing about it. And, and, and I mean, I can't remember a thing about it. I remember walking around going, walking away going, it was, it, it was sort of like that other film that, uh, that he did recently where he's kind of a, uh, he's a game designer. Oh, you're talking about free guy. Yeah. Free guy. Which I haven't seen, but yeah, I, I think both of the, I think both of them have a lot in common that, they just are well, they're directed by the same guy i think sean really Levy. because because the, it's just it's just him it's just ryan reynolds right and, and and you just don't care about any of the rest of it whatsoever and and that's that's fine but it kind of is yeah he he, he uh was a producer like a waste, on free guy it seems like a waste of building a whole film around yeah, he directed you know? Free Guy and Adam Project. So I right. think it was a kind of a deal where he was working with Ryan Reynolds on a couple of projects, obviously. Right. <laughs> but then, he also then, directed some Stranger Things episodes. So he's kind of like... Oh, so it's all his fault. He's doing a lot of different things, apparently. Right. It's, but, but you know... It, but he's also funny. doing Deadpool 3. This was exactly the same... This is exactly the same problem that I had with Free Guy. Was that there wasn't anything compelling about anything else that was going around going on uh an awful lot of the casting didn't seem right um we also got out in the middle of the Tulis, uh and it it, it seemed 
know. Well, yeah, so I, when I saw this before, I wasn't blown away, and I was like, should I suggest that we review this? I'm like, no, it's boring. So I didn't even suggest it. And then I felt the same way this time. I'm like, okay, there's nothing I remember. I feel the same way. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I just remember right. Mark Ruffalo kind of annoyed me. When right. he talks, he annoys me. Just, like, he's okay yeah. when he's there. <laughs> but when he yeah. talks, oh, my God, shut up. Anyway. Honestly, uh, <laughs> honestly, I would give this a two, and, and I would feel really bad that I well, what's sad is any of it. I felt I don't like remember. Ryan Reynolds kind of saved it enough for me to just, hang in just, there. Because I like enough. Ryan Reynolds. So I, I can know, hang I just, in there. But, but you know, the thing. It feels they, like Nightmare on Elm Street 4 kind of takes you on a ride. But there's right. nothing there. There's no substance. There's nothing interesting. Exactly. Right. Right. Well, you know, it's it's and it's bad like, CG. It's like CGI. when the when the alien, yeah, and bad CGI. Right. I mean, when 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 they're shooting on it, nothing looks more like CGI than this film. Right. It looks CGI, and it's uh, like early was, '90s, like uh, next generation well, kind of stuff. Well, you, you know what's <laughs> funny about it is there was there was a sequence in there somewhere where the first I think it's the first time that we see her come in with the ship right and the ship comes in and it starts shooting down on him and i distinctly thought to myself that every one of the explosions of where the shot it land was the same one right <laughs> you, you know it, it's like they just went in and got it was a puff of dirt if it if it had like landed on concrete it would have been just a puff of dirt going up right it, it just it didn't look like you know, it's like if they, if it had shot in the middle of the lake, it would have just been a puff of dirt up in the middle of the lake because it was the same shot, dun, 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 all through it. I went, wow, man, that's that that is daring these days. You know, well, you have a budget, you got to stick in the budget, right? Yeah. Uh, well, so this guy, Sean Levy, the guy that directed, is actually a, he produces a lot of stuff too. So maybe he was budget conscience and he was like oh we can't afford any poofs Ooh, yeah <laughs> not, 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 nothing like producer directors <laughs> very hard I, I, I worked with one in canada recently and was like oh so what worries me is he's gonna direct deadpool 3 and i know uh was it tim uh who's the guy that directed deadpool tim something right yeah yeah uh <laughs> i should know this tim martin or something no uh wasting time let me see well wait oh it's tim me, miller tim miller tim miller right well here's the thing but let, let me let me say here's the best thing i can say about this film is that uh the new thor is coming out and tiki watiti <laughs> is the director oh looks god yeah really and, and really you have to go see the trailer to that because at looks amazing this film was shit. um well uh, this had one it, thing going for it Ryan it, had, it had Hulk, Deadpool, and Elektra, all in the same movie. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it, it. The thing the thing is, is the best thing I can say about this film is that Thor is coming. <laughs> and that when I was watching this film, they had an advertisement for that. And I thought, ooh, this is great. And then I got to watch Ryan Reynolds for the rest of this. I'm like, oh, man. Uh. I want to see Ryan Reynolds read a phone book. In fact, I I will personally I will, be the, I will supply... offer my ex expertise to direct it. <laughs> and there will be some phone great... book. not not the film, but the phone book. You'll no, direct I, the phone I'm book. gonna have him read the phone book, but I'm gonna have some amazing CGI. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that we're we're turning this film into <laughs> in, into an advertisement for the other for for a for uh, uh, the phone book film. Right. Which yeah, that's untitled at the moment, <laughs> and uh, and for Thor, <laughs> and for the, the upcoming Thor film, that's 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 exactly how good this film was. It's gonna be Ryan A to Z. A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, I don't. That's way too big of a project. I, I don't think you're gonna get. I don't think you can get through the L's. Okay. So well, no, actually, I'll plan sequels. So I'll have like A through H. <laughs> <laughs> that's right right you know it's a, a and then and then you could come with the prequel which is one through ten <laughs> no one through nine. Oh no don't even get me started on like the yellow pages <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what that is that's just a money grab 
Oh! See what I did there? <laughs> See, that would be when I sell out. <laughs> That's right. Uh, bum, bum, bum. And Mark Ruffalo will be in that one. <laughs> Uh, so I get this one, uh, one and a half, maybe I, I'm giving her a one. I, I, that, the, the awful thing about this one is, is that I had to be there with my wife during this and then, and, and you she, don't like your wife. She, she thinks Ron Reynolds is God, you know, and, yeah, and uh, he kind of is, it, which he is, he is. I, I, the thing is, is, you know, uh, this was a bit of a stumble, right? I mean, I've said I've sat in church before, and I think God gets pretty boring, to tell you the truth, uh, after a while. I just wish Ryan was on this podcast because... Because because we love Ryan. It would be amazing. Yeah. If we could get him... uh, You got a phone book? (laughs) I'm going to pitch it to him. Hey, Ryan. Oh, there you go. (laughs) I got a project for you. (laughs) Imagine some great CGI. That's just right. CGI. (laughs) And a blast from the past, a phone book. People don't even know what that is, really. Okay. I think half of our two listeners don't know what a phone book is. That's that's because they're so young? That one guy. That one guy. That guy. Uh, The guy over there. uh, That guy. Cleveland. uh, Yeah. I like this. I like this look with the black in the background. uh, No, actually, I I was going to say you're kind of glowing like a, you're like a, like an angel. Yeah, I didn't set up my side recorder, which I was going to do for you this time, but I'll do it next time. Okay? Have you thought about messing with the lights, like having them come from the side and then have them like... I have a light right change there. Change directions. I have a light right there, and I have a light right there. And this one's done in a very sharp bluish color, and this one is done in a yellowish color, which is the... that's the, We used to call that the, the uh, C- CTR uh, and the CTB. Um which was uh, the standard colors for lighting a face. And it's working. And I finally got them both down into the area, and they it's, look right. So it's kind of helping. <laughs> Actually, I want to say two, like, car headlights behind you. <laughs> well, that's poor. It could be poor man's process, right? <laughs> right. You, you know what poor man's process was? <laughs> Tell me about poor it. Man's, poor, man's pro- poor man's process is when you put a car on the stage, Oh, okay. Yeah. And then and then you put the lights on wheels, right? right? <laughs> yes. and, and you did and you did the tail the the headlight thing, right? You know, and you do the and then you turn them off, right? And you come back up and replace that light, and then you'd have a couple of lights coming by. <laughs> you know, we did we did the same thing with daylight. We'd like do trees going by and st- sure, you yeah. know, they put just mount a whole bunch of stuff. Dude, you have no idea how many times, how many shows. How many shows I've done, I have set that up. You know, I've even done it with airplanes on stages before. Nice. Right? Cessnas. And in fact, you could, there, there was this little Cessna that you could rent all the time, uh, all over town. It was like on a trailer, right? You know, and it had like just, you know, maybe about that much of the wing on either side, <laughs> you know, and just enough so that you could get, you know, and then you could attach a wing on one side so that you could see the long shot over the edge like this and you'd be over here with fans and everything and the blue sky all the way around and doing little puffs of smoke and you know with fans and make the puff of smoke come by and then you could pour you know you, you, you we used to like do oh we're in a hail storm you know and you'd like you'd, you'd like be throwing handfuls of like rock salt at the windshield and shit like that ah! i didn't know you you worked on spirit of st louis with jimmy stewart <laughs> i didn't know that careful <laughs> That was another one of those. You know what? That's very ageist of you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my wife and I decided to get life insurance. And like, they said, oh, they might call you for a physical, but you guys are young enough. We don't have to come up. And so I get a message saying, hey, they want to do a physical for me. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah. I feel old now. I'm like, uh, I'm not that oh, old. You, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you, if you really want to, if you really want to, you know, feel old, I just last year age out of my <laughs> out, out of my life insurance is that even possible I aged, that's 20 years i aged i went all the way and aged out of the end of the 20 year contract well that's ageist yeah no shit tell me about it and i and i and i and i made it through the whole thing wow yeah 
Yeah, I probably but had people betting against I, that, probably. I, but I, but the thing is, there, I had death insurance. It wasn't exactly life insurance, you know. Yours is probably a death insurance. It, it only pays back on, on, on death. It's not like right. an yeah. annuity or any of the rest of that, right? Right. Because annuities are crap. But yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, we have covered a lot. Life insurance. We have, we have covered a lot <laughs> of topics on this show. Um, and we actually even covered a little bit of the movie itself. I'm going to take that little clip about life insurance, and I'm going to start another channel called uh, Accounting 101. <laughs> see if we get any followers oh uh, there they were they were out there annuity baiting again oh <laughs> uh, anyway well Enough john travolta is going into surgery so i need to go okay so we gotta get out we gotta <laughs> okay. get, we, we get, they want to use the room right yeah. right okay later all right bye okay man i will see you later i'm out of here all right have a good one okay. bye